Oh, it's just around the corner. 11-7, that's it. What's up, Game Weepers? The Jizz is back at it. And yes, I call myself the Jizz before you ask in the comments, this time with the full rundown of the 11-7 patch changes that were released today. So if you want to know what Riot has in store for the 11-7 patch, which is just over a week away, then this video is all you need. I'm going to be breaking down in detail all of the champion buffs, the champion nerfs, the item buffs, the item nerfs, how these will affect the meta and whether it will be worth playing these champions in the near future. As per guides, I want you to tell me your thoughts on the changes, in particular if your champion is affected by any. And just a quickie, make sure to check out the Game Week website. Unlike other sites, guys, we upload fresh daily content. It's not recycled from YouTube all the time. It's challenged, it's here, it's informative, it's original, so do yourself a favor and get signed up. Links, as always, in the description and comment section. All right, let's get into it, and we're going to start with the champion buffs, guys, and those coming to Yasuo, everyone's favorite champion, am I right? So right up buffing your AD per level, so basically your damage is going up. But the issue for Yasuo, guys, at the moment is that he is struggling to survive. Even with Shield Bow giving a bigger shield, there is no lifesteal in its passive anymore, and less lifesteal overall, so there is no sustain. Throwing the Ravenous Hunter nerf as well. So yes, you will notice more offensive power in the mid to late game especially, but dying 10 times a game will still be very achievable. Let me know Yasmin's your thoughts. Now the next buffs we have to talk about are to 280 carries, these being Ash and Varus. So for Ash, well it looks nice, a bit of increase in W damage, but does this really mean anything? I mean, I guess it makes your laning a little stronger, but like Yasuo, there are bigger issues at play here. The main one being, you can't compete with the best ADCs in terms of DPS and carry ability. Even if Riot buffed your volley's mana cost, that would have been preferred because with the new presence of mind, you still go um hella fast, especially early on. Now for Varus, guys, you are finally strong again because listen to what the balance team did for you. They buffed your AD per level by 0.4. Wow, I'm just pulling your leg, this doesn't really help anything. Yeah, your lethality build and Qs will hit a little harder, but you're still dying every fight. Your ultimate travel is slower than me getting out of bed at 3.30am to do this video, and his on hit is still very meh. Unless you get four teammates peeling you, 11-7 is going to be rough for both these AE carries. Now one champion it's not going to be rough for is Amumu, well in low elos anyway. And this little green bandage tosser, well these buffs are legit. Your Q is costing 20 less mana at all ranks, and your E's cooldown is down one second at all ranks too. This is going to allow you to queue through your jungle camps without having to worry about going oom all the time. And the E cooldown matters because you max this first, and this will also help your clear and extended team fighting. A movement will be an even bigger force in lower elo, guys, and this might even see him have more success in higher elos too. Now, this next champion getting buffed hasn't been that happy this season in the top lane with bruises and a few tanks reigning supreme, but the buff to Mordekaiser will no doubt help you mace wielders out, well, to some extent. So your Q's isolation damage is increasing, which is handy when you ult someone into the realm of of death, but for a juggernaut, you are the most killable out of all of them. You're not really tanky, your resistances are low, and even if you do build armor or magic resist, who cares? Camille, Fiora, Darius, they are still going to put you in the dirt. Now, any buff is nice, I guess, I get that, but Maud mains, are you happy? You mad? Let me know. Now, another mage who should have a happier 11-7 is Lissandra, and your Q's damage is increasing by 10 at all ranks, and this is somewhat good. You max this skill first too, so yeah, like a Moomoo, it kind of matters, but in this patch, guys, your go-to mythic Everfrost is getting nerfed, so if this was meant to be some sort of compensation buff, yeah, not really feeling this one. Now, another champion from the Freyjord getting buffed is Braum. And I was expecting to see a bigger moustache in here, taking into account the quality of buffs so far. But in all seriousness, guys, unlike most of the buffs so far, these actually mean something. Your E's cooldown is down two seconds at all ranks, and your ultimate's maximum knockup duration is longer at later ranks. Now, the E buff is the real star of the show, because this ability helps block skill shots and keep your teammates alive. So for skirmishing and team fighting, a big positive. Now, the ultimate buff, you're not going to notice this until level 11 onwards, but still, that first target hit is going to be more killable, so yeah, nice. Now this jungler, guys, if you can play her, she's actually one of the best hard carries out there, and this should be more achievable on Kindred next patch. So your Q's AD ratio is increasing, and your E's cooldown is decreasing by 2 seconds at all ranks, but the new values Riot have given us, well, these already exist, so whether they meant your W or just mistyped the cooldown, yeah, we'll have to wait for clarification. But still, the Q buff really improves your clear, and fighting, it's just that attack speed is the most important stat, and whatever cooldown Riot do eventually buff, well, you're probably still using this only once per fight. And the last champion in buff guys is Yorick, and I think we're going to see way more shovelers next patch with these bad boy changes. So you're no longer going to be copying tower aggro when your mist walkers attack, because they will now be the primary target, and this is a great quality of life buff. When you land your E, mark champions will awaken graves during the debuff, which means you don't have to double cast your Q to get your raves, and this makes your tougher matchups easier to deal with in particular. Now this is a big one, your E's mist 
Planeswalkers now deal an attack when they leap to the target, which is huge. This is a Conqueror stack, a Black Lever stack DPS. And finally, your Maiden is the last priority target on the Towers hit list, so you can now hit Towers without losing your ultimate. So Grave Diggers, it is time to rejoice and let me know how happy you are about these buffs in the comments. So those were the buffs, guys, but it's time to do a 180 and talk about the upcoming champion nerfs just around the corner. Now, as we get into it, I want you to tell me in the comments which champion you think needs a nerf because they are that OP. And maybe it's this one. So 11-7 Kaiser is going to be weaker, guys, and that's because Ryder making your ultimates cooldown longer in the early game. So in the laning phase, you won't have as much opportunity to dive onto the enemy AD carry with your support, and if you get ganked, you're a lot more vulnerable. With three hard engaged supports nerfed as well, and we'll get into these real soon, this will for sure see Kaiser pick less. Now next up, we have two turbo chem tank abusers in the jungle copying a jab next patch, these two being Hecarim and Udair. So for Hecarim, guys, your ease maximum movement speed is down, and apart from the obvious, you know, you're not going to be as fast, this also means you're not going to deal as much damage because MS equals damage due to your passive. Turbo chem tank's movement speed is also getting nerfed this patch, but there is a silver lining here. Trinity Force is getting buffed and giving you more movement speed, so my guess is that the TF becomes the most built mythic on Heck again. So 11-7 Heck will still be picked, banned, and yeah, probably carrying. Now for Udair, guys, your base AD is down by 2, and it looks like it's worth mocking, but it does carry a bit of weight this, especially in the early game. Less AD means less clear speed, weaker ganks, weaker fighting, and this means your tiger stance is weaker as well, seeing as this scales off your AD. As I mentioned with Hecarim, the soon-to-be-mentioned chem tank nerf hurts too, so 11-7 Udir guys is definitely weaker, and I'm sure lots of you are happy about that. So we had Kaiser getting nerfed, now we have Tristana, and in 11-7 your base AD is down by 2, just like the Udir nerf we talked about. This also means something, whether you're playing Tristana mid or ADC, your auto attacks don't hit as hard, which reduces your harass and ability to last hit and push waves. Thankfully though, your ease damage, which is your real source of power in the early game, and being able to proc this with Halo Blades, scales off your bonus AD, not your total AD, so your explosive charge is still going to be as explosive. Like I said for Kaiser though, with a few heavy CC supports on the dropping block, Tristana won't be prioritized as much. Now those supports Tristana pops off with, you know the old hard engages, three of these are getting nerfed. Three! So for Alistair, Rel, and Thresh guys, you're not going to be as menacing next patch. Now for Alistair, your Q's damage is down at later ranks, and your basic attack, which triggers your E stun, well this is dealing less damage too. Holy cow. Yeah look, the Q is very minimal, but the E nerf, there is something to be said for it because your E's damage is noticeable, so you're less scary when you just tap E and move towards an enemy squishy. Now for Rel, your E stun duration is 0.25 seconds shorter, which may mean you can't lock down an enemy champion as much. I mean, it does mean that, it's just such a short amount of time that no one is really going to notice it, so Rel is practically the same in 11.7. And then we have Thresh guys, and your W shield is decreasing at later ranks, and this is important for those Thresh players maxing W with Guardian as their keystone, and this is being seen more and more in high elo. Lanterning your teammates in and out of fights is just more valuable in this high damage meta, so will this force you to max Q again? We'll have to wait and see. Now the last Sherpin nerf we have to talk about guys is to Ivern, and good news, if you play the Vern that is, you will still be super strong in 11.7. Despite Riot gearing up to nerf your ease burst damage at later ranks, and though you max this, the fact that Daisy will still be hitting like a truck due to the 11.6 bug fix is all you need to brush your way to victory. Now as we get into the item changes guys, it is my last friendly reminder to all of you watching to first of all, like the video for timestamps, and to not forget to check out the Game Week website when I start talking. I wouldn't rave about it nearly as much if it was weaker than a zero at the moment, so get around that top tier content that thousands of your fellow summoners are taking advantage of, links down below. Alright, so the item buffs coming next patch, well there are two of them, the first being Cyrilda's Grudge, and this is costing 200 gold less so you can hit that power spike sooner, so for Ezreal, Zed, Talon, Kiana, this is big, spending 3400 gold was a bit steep. Now the other buff is coming to arguably the worst mythic in the game, and that's Trinity Force, so you're getting 5 more AD, but 5 less attack speed, okay. Your mythic passive is now giving 3 AD, 3 movement speed, and 3 ability haste instead of 10% attack speed, and a new effect, your threefold strike passive now procs on towers. So how do I say this guys? Pick Camille, and Trinity Force Yorick sounds broken too. A better all around mythic passive and the fact you can get in more damage against towers is huge, the split push packs an even bigger punch. Now let me throw a cheeky little item adjustment at you guys, and this is to turbo chem tank, and when you use this active, you're losing 15% movement speed, but its slow is increasing 10%. Now the slow change isn't impactful at all, but the movement speed nerf will be for those champions abusing it like Skana, Hecker, and Minuta. So honestly, more of an item nerf than an item adjustment. Now last up guys, we have the item nerfs, and there are three of these. So for Essence Reaver, it's actually costing 100 less gold, but giving 10 less AD, so you won't be hitting as hard. But for champions building this like Fiora, Gangplan, Gezer, or Lucian, for 2800 gold, you still get everything else the AI gives you, so you get to this item spike quicker, but yeah, you're not doing as much damage. Now next in line, we have one of the best mage mythics in the game. Everfrost, and Ryder reverting the 11-4 buffs to Glacier 
most damage and increasing its cooldown by 10 seconds. Now the damage is a bit of a low blow here because it really empowers those mages with burst damage like Ari and Kassadin, so your full combos aren't as lethal. The extra cooldown means you won't be getting off as many roots during fights as well, so definitely a nerf, but it will hopefully still be good enough to pick. And the last item nerf guys is Lord Dominic's Regards, with its price increasing by 100 gold and its AD lowering by 5. It will still be a good item, but for ADCs and grades specifically for example, rushing this as a second major item will not be as worth. So those were the 11-7 changes guys, and again any thoughts, any comments, any rage, any tilt, any happiness, let out that emotion in the comments. And as you scroll down to type up a storm, remember to hit that sub button if you haven't already, and the bell as well. And until tomorrow's video, this has been Coach.